For 60 years, motorcycle helmets have been evolving. Or have they? What if everything you thought you knew about motorcycle helmets was flawed science or blatantly wrong? For 60 years, helmets have been constructed of two basic parts. Those two parts consist of a hard outer shell and a soft energy absorbing liner. The outer shell consisted of either fiberglass and resin or an injection molded material. Historically, the interior absorption material has been expanded polystyrene, which is also known as EPS. Prior to that, organic materials such as cork were used. Where's the evolution? Where's the innovation? In recent times, the market's been introduced to additional technology that claims to prevent or mitigate rotational force, but it's done using the same materials with retrofitted parts. We believe that for the first time, the game truly has changed. LS2 has changed the game by incorporating nanoparticle aramid with a high-end polymer. We've created an extremely strong, lightweight material with a low friction coefficient and built-in flex that will manage energy from the outside in. There's been a major shift in the business of football. The NFL has spent millions of dollars working with new companies and technology which eliminate the hard external shell surface because it simply doesn't protect well enough. In 2018, the two top performing rated football helmets by the NFL had a flexible shell surface that controls energy from the outside in. This is exactly what KPA was developed to do. In 2018, the NFL went so far as to ban 10 popular helmets from popular brands that were all used at the highest levels of competition. The evolution of the automobile went through an equally transformative revolution. You often hear they don't make them like they used to when seeing a large vehicle from the 40s or 50s. There was a car brand in the late 1940s actually released a car without seat belts because someone in the company's marketing department convinced the president of the company that if the car came with seat belts, the public perception would be that this car wasn't well built or even safe to drive. In 1951, Mercedes-Benz engineer Bella Bernier put safety above public perception, and he focused on the dangers of vehicle rigidity. In a collision, a rigid car body structure transmits crash energy directly to the occupants. Bernier realized that the occupants were safest in a vehicle that dissipated most of the energy before it could reach the cabin. His answer was the crumple zone, for which he received a patent. His design consisted of a rigid passenger compartment with more flexible structures at the front and rear. Out of transformative thinking, the modern crumple zone was born. Why is it then that nearly 70 years later, the motorcycle helmet is still so woefully behind the times? LS2 uses the same technology in the design of its off-road helmets. You've all seen someone test how good an MX helmet is by squeezing the sides of the chin bar to see how rigid it is. Here's the flawed thought behind that way of thinking. An extremely rigid chin bar will transfer a disproportionate amount of energy into the head and brain, whereas the chin bar that collapses but doesn't shatter will provide a similar car-like crumple zone effect. Recently, a photo we posted has made its way around the internet. It featured a crumpled chin bar from a helmet that sustained a 45 mile an hour head-on face-first crash into a tree. The rider not only lived, but he walked away with no concussion. A strong but flexible shell married to a crumple zone built into the chin bar, along with the EPS, allowed for this. This technology has trickled its way down into our even more affordable line. Another, more simple way of thinking about this is comparing a wooden baseball bat to an aluminum bat. With a wooden bat, the sweet spot is smaller and more focused on a small area. It transfers the energy back into the ball but also into your hands. Ever hit a ball and felt it with your hands? With the aluminum bat, the sweet spot is larger, more spread out, and transfers energy over a larger portion of the sweet spot, causing the ball to launch and less direct transfer into your hands. A KPA shell similarly has more flex. This means that more of the energy is managed effectively, not transferring it directly into a smaller, more focused area. There are three nearly simultaneous crashes happening when a rider hits the ground. Number one, the shell hits the ground. Number two, 
the head compresses against the compression liner inside the shell. And number three, and most vital, the brain hits the inside of the skull. Depending on how violently that third impact takes place determines the true severity of the overall crash. The goal of any helmet is to delay the amount of time those first and third impacts take place. What if you could delay the amount of time it took that first crash to start and that last crash to stop? What if you could limit the dwell time at the peak amount of g-force being inflicted? Have a look at the head-to-head -head comparisons between a KPA shell and one of the more popular carbon fiber MX helmets on the market. Both of these charts were done by ACT Lab, one of the premier worldwide labs that tests for DOT and ECE. It would appear that the harder surface material in the carbon shell allows for a longer dwell time at a higher g-force. KPA is slippery under the paint layer. It will slide in a high-speed crash more effectively than a fiber-based laminate. You don't see road racer knee pucks made from fiber-based laminates. People would laugh at the thought of this. Why then do they want a helmet made from the same material, knowing that it has such a high friction coefficient under the paint layer? We've seen many hit pieces against injection molded helmets where someone can collapse the chin bar easily. LS2 KPA has flex, and the shells and EPS have crumple zones designed specific to the application. Traditional ABS and polycarbonate helmets do have a moderate amount of flex, but adding nanoparticle aramid to a high-end polymer is what maintains the structural integrity. We believe that it manages the impact in a more responsible way. Whether in a head-first or pendulum effect impact, KPA manages the impact while maintaining shell integrity. What if everything you thought you knew or had been taught about what makes a motorcycle helmet safe was flawed science? What if, like a giant boat of a car, your ultra-rigid helmet was a dinosaur from another time? What if LS2 just changed the game?